<laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of Touched by a Horse. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, and I'm here with your host and actually the founder of Touched by a Horse, Melissa Pierce. Hello, Melissa. Hi, Chris. This is exciting. Like, we've been doing episode after episode with all of your practitioners, and we finally get to go to the source, like the origin of all of this work, which is you. They've all great. done a great job. It's really been very yeah. good for me. It is, yeah. Something that you... You birth into the world and then I watch mm. them and, and mm -hmm. they've just done a great job with your your help. It's been yeah, it's been really amazing. Like I I've learned a ton on this side. Never having heard about that work or gone through any of the work, to learn on this side of it is really fun. And it's amazing. it's changed a lot of perspective about horses and um healing and all the kind of work that happens there. But I feel like we get to kind of go to the real origin story today with you and where this work came from, even like what kind of um process everybody that's been a host on this show has had to go through to be certified uh, by your program. So maybe take me to the beginning, like how did all of this start? When did it start? You know, give me some backstory. Well, the work itself started, um, I lived in Phoenix, Arizona, which is so hot at this summer. Mm. And uh, I bought a ranch, a small place in Flagstaff because it's a lot cooler up there. And so I'd move to Flagstaff in the summer times mm. and I would take usually about 10 or 12 of my horses with me. They'd be up there in the Flagstaff cool air and grass. But back then, this would be the mid eighties. I was seeing my psychotherapy clients, but I wasn't putting them together with the horses. Mm. The thought had not occurred to me yet. And of course we didn't have the internet back then. So I couldn't mm. Google it either. Right. Right. So yeah. I would notice that if you were my client, I might see you from, 10 in the morning to noon. And then I'd say, Chris, let's meet back up at 3.30 and follow up on what we're talking about and working on. And in, in that time, you can hike, you can go fish in our stream, you can go pet the horses, but don't go mm. on the same side of the fence as the horses just because mm. it would be the assumption you're not a horseman. Those were right, right. the day. And so what I observed was if I worked with you that morning, and then you went down that a different one of my horses walked out of the perfectly green grass over to the fence to just kind of hang out with you. Mm. And when I would meet you back at 3.30, the clients consistently told me, it was so beautiful, this horse came over. Mm. And what I noticed was a change in the client's ability to access their emotions. Wow. So hugely beneficial. Huh. I'm a lifetime horseman, so I knew horses access my emotions all the time, but mm. didn't really put it together to have it purposeful with my yeah. So the following summer, I just started doing that, and uh, it was hugely successful, and I am a gestaltist, and so I would do the gestalt work in the mm. presence of the horse, and then put mm. the person with the horses, and magic happened. Wow. So you just, you, you kind of connected the dots, and then you started trying it. I mean, you didn't, but did you know it w would work? You're just like, hey, let's just try this session with the horse around us. And right, right. So I was, wow. I was inviting non horsemen to come down to the barn. It would right. be your first session with me. You know, back then, right. I do some other sessions and I'd make a suggestion, would you like to do that? And yeah. most of the people were eager. They were a little mm. scared because they mm. didn't know about horses, but they were eager to try it out. And wow. I was really candid. I said, this is something new I'm doing this summer to see how it goes. And mm. You know, here I am 35 years later. <laughs> wow, yeah. What did you notice when, when you started trying that? Like results from be before doing that to results doing after doing that. Like what did you notice was different about it? Because you stayed with it for 35 years, like you said. So Gestalt is hugely effective and it's very, um, it's, it's just beautiful work. So we'll talk about that a little bit today, yeah. I assume. But really what I noticed was that the horses live very much a gestalt kind of life, meaning mm. in the present moment, mm. they don't do anxiety unless a human's imposing it on them. But in their natural state, they don't worry about yesterday. They, mm. they weren't thinking yesterday, how's my podcast going to go today? <laughs> right. The humans do. They just stay yeah. right here in the present moment. So that was one. Mm. Number two, that they had an interest in showing up for these people when they were in pain. Mm. And, and that interested me because they had to come off of grass, which is their favorite thing in the world, right? Mm. And mm. they would be drawn to the client. Mm. And what I put together was they were never drawn to the client when they were thinking about something. They were always drawn when I had accessed them into their true emotions. The client, when you would access the client into their true emotions? Yeah. yeah. I got the client to mm. 
stop trying to overanalyze and think about everything mm -hmm. and actually mm -hmm. look at what they felt and mm -hmm. very body centered. So got yeah. their body. That's when the horses would sort of like literally, Chris, lift their head mm -hmm. and start coming over. It was like picking up the phone for them. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. And then on the client side, like what was the difference with the, would you call them a patient or what, what would you call them? A Usually a client. Yeah. And, uh, so their feedback to me was immediate. They were just mm. so, I think one client said it best. He said, you never forget a lesson that a 1200 pound. Animal mm. Yeah. Wow. Point. And for that particular client, he was not a horseman. So oh. he had a little trepidation, you know, it's a big animal mm -hmm. and he had a little bit of concern. And what he learned was how sensitive they are and especially how drawn they were to his truth. Mm. A lot of the work was around their truth. So many of them said to me, I feel such support with this animal or I feel, huh. you know, we, we know dogs go into hospitals and do right. miracles for patients, right? Right, but right actually do once they i think they raise your blood pressure at first because you don't know anything about them <laughs> right <laughs> yes i i remember i my aunt had uh two horses uh, growing up and as a little kid i would go into the barn and just even like the the like noises you know scare it was it was pretty scary i'm like like i didn't know if they're gonna eat me or if they're just gonna nudge me or <laughs> you know but they're huge we're the predator they're the prey right so right they have a much they have the mm. flip of that it's just they're very large but mm, they're yeah. not coming after anybody they don't have right, a predatory right. nerve in them this, this might sound weird i love um i love the i don't say novelty as in like it's a gimmick or a trick but the that there's a lot of people who do work to help people heal, but to have the experience like to anchor that experience in something that is that memorable, like you said, with this ginormous animal is such an amazing um, differentiator, I guess. It is. It is. And, you know, many years ago, there were the ropes courses. You remember when a lot yeah. of were popular, all the ropes courses, right? Yeah. Yeah. So and they help people so much even with the ropes courses when you experience something rather than just talk about it mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. or listen to somebody and just get the intellectual aha uh -huh. but when mm -hmm. you have an experience that yeah. changes things that really shifts people so that's what the horses are they're a big experience right so it is for mm -hmm. them too but it's a big experience for the client yeah and connecting the dots and helping mm -hmm. them really show up uh, with the clients is just, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. Wow. So how, so, so walk me into how you started to create this certification process. Cause you had this own experience. You're like no horses. Now I'm using horses. And then sometime you decided to create and invite other people into this type of work that you had discovered. Exactly. <laughs> so it is kind of strange. I, I was hugely successful just doing it myself. And, um, I had clients literally coming from all over the world and I'd be mm. booked way out in advance. Wow. I had some people who are what I call handlers. So they would come and be a present assistant during the work. Mm -hmm. And so the first one was a handler of mine. She's now a graduate. She mm. said, if I want to learn to do what you do, mm. how would I start learning it? And I thought, I don't know, because it's mm. really the alchemy. Yeah. Of my being a therapist, of my being a gestaltist, of my being a lifetime horseman, of, you know, many things, somatic mm. teacher, all this kind of stuff. And so I thought about it. Well, during that same week after she asked me that, I had three emails from people that said, do you take apprentices? Could I apprentice with you to do this work? This was separate from that in inquiry. Wow. We yeah. We met each other mm. and I had like five inquiries. Hmm. Hmm. So I felt like it was the nudge from the universe. Yeah time for you to move into sort of the sage position with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did uh, have somebody, one of the people asking, and she said, how many people do you think you will change their lives sitting across from them, just you, because your work changes people's lives. It's transformational. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it. And she said, in your lifetime, I don't know how long you plan on living. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do you think? And I gave her a number when I did the math, right? She said, do you realize if you did have people who learned your method, how that would just be exponential? Mm -hmm. And it got me thinking. And I thought, yeah, what do I really want to do with my life's mission? Is it just to keep on one-on-one? -on -one, or is it mm -hmm. possibly to be able to throw the stone in the pond and bring mm -hmm. it out? Right.
what I found out though, Chris, was it wasn't going to be three quick weekends and wham, bam. <laughs> How could it be? I mean, especially with all the life experience you have had in, in the somatic stuff and the gestaltist work, plus the horseman. I mean, all of it. Yeah. The whole picture. So How could you get that done in three weekends? I, I, yeah, you can't. Right. And what I wanted to do was very safely help them become professional coaches with it. Mm. And I know the coaching word is thrown around a lot now. Sure. So actually, we call them gestaltists. But yeah. to really bring them, they weren't going to become psychotherapists. Mm -hmm. They needed to understand when did the client need the psychotherapist and when were they okay with the coach. So we had Got to it. differentiate that. Uh -huh. And then a lot of them are, are not horsemen or they've had one or two horses in their lives. So they still have a lot to learn there. Hmm. And so I pictured it kind of like a pizza pie. They yeah. needed to learn human dynamics. Mm -hmm. They needed to learn equine dynamics, somatics, coaching methods, gestalt. You know, it's like a lot of pieces. Right. And most of our students come in with one or two that they have a pretty good understanding or handle on. Mm -hmm. um, but it explodes right. from there. So it's it does take them two years to get I was going to say, yeah, like how long does that take to go through that type of curriculum or that type of learning? It's a really rich curriculum. We teach, uh, I teach it all right now, and it's, uh, it happens to be on Tuesday nights. It's recorded, and it's a very deep curriculum on all those topics. Mm. They do that for two years. Then they meet with me in person for eight intensives, and the intensives are like four days long. Mm. And that's with the horses. So we're not doing the didactic there. We're doing the actual hands-on work. Right. Um, so it's it's an involvement. They have textbooks. They have exams. Because right. you can get a certificate and a lot of things in life. Just pay for it. <laughs> Most people didn't pay for the certificate. Yeah. It is a whole different thing. We do have right. continuing education units. Yeah. They have exams. They work under supervision. All of that kind of thing as well. How um what once they're once they do they graduate? How what do you call that when they're done with the two years? Certified. So they're certified. Okay. We do call them graduates, and we do have a graduation. Sure. What, how, what is the common denominator of people who come to learn from you? Is it that they're horsemen? Is it they, they, they are very empathetic? Like what are some common denominators? I think empathetic is a really good way to say it. I mm. think what they know is they've reached a point in their life in which they would like to assist other people in healing. And the idea mm. of doing it alongside their horse has a lot of appeal. Mm. So I find that Hmm. Our program is really for people who want to learn to sit in the presence of deep pain because a lot of our clients are veterans home from war or women that hmm. have been sexually assaulted or mm -hmm. people that have had their children taken away. I mean, it's, it's really big stuff alongside hmm. people that are trying to figure out. One client might be trying to figure out, well, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? I retired at 60. I plan hmm. on living another 30 years. So what do I want to do now that refire instead of retire kind of thing yeah yeah that's good uh, so you know just kind of and somebody else it's their marriage is on the rocks and so i want them to be able to professionally meet with each and every person that comes uh in and i think right. they put that in the graduates like kathy o'connor with her great story one day at a time mm -hmm. and she yep. covering addicts and you know each one has something andrea with her attorneys and mm -hmm. um, Everybody has their sort of specialty or niche, but yeah. they are well trained to handle pretty much anybody that thinks they have pain, have ever had pain, wow. or will have pain, right? Which is right. <laughs> to, um, so that's with the uh, the practitioners and who, the common denominator of who comes to you. But now it's something about um, sort of just how, because there's the horse side of it, right? Like that's the human side of it and who comes to you as humans. But uh, you have a unique perspective as it relates to horses. I'm curious on that a little bit. Can you take us there for a second? So I think the ideal horse for this work is one that has had a pretty good life, right? Mm. It has a relationship with humans that mm. the human doesn't need to apologize for anything that's happened to the horse before. Mm. The horse has what we call good ground manners. So they're a very safe horse for people to be around mm. because don't put really experienced horsemen with them and they need to be a certain age and a certain kind of temperament mm. to, to mm. keep the whole thing very safe. All right. right. One. Um, many people look at this industry, equine human healing uh, industry, as a place for horses that maybe have gone to sanctuaries or 
you know, they've been starved and somebody's been kind enough to pick them up and take care of them. Mm. And it, it's an opportunity for them to sort of repurpose the horse to repurpose its division. Mm. And I agree with that a lot of times, but there are other times in which I think the covenant between man and horse has been so deeply broken mm. that we can take care of that horse for the rest of its life and not expect it to do something for us. You know, mm. it's kind of, Kind of the arrogance of the human to say, well, here's another way the horse can serve us because they've served us for thousands of years. Right. In a yeah. lot of very important ways. So for me, it's important the horse wants to do this, um, is, is eager to do this. And most horses are. Most horses are interested because we come from a place of respect for them. Mm. Uh, it's not an obstacle course. It's not a ropes course. It's right. not, the horse is not a tool. The horse is a full-on coaching partner, mm. and they're using what I call their clairsentience, or the horse's natural intuitive ability, mm. and their natural way of wanting to come to people and express it in, in their way. So that's what makes ours really different from a lot of the other work that's out there. Um, where, where does, um, and maybe, maybe this has been around for a long time, so my ignorance is showing, but where did the, um, for years, thousands of years, we ride horses and horses are a tool and to some degree, maybe, or maybe, maybe people who uh, if we go far enough back, it didn't, wasn't that way. Yeah. But what was the shifting point for that? Like where horses became partners? A form, well, I think really recently, <laughs> but the form of, that, of uh, transportation was one of their roles. They pulled plows, right? Mm -hmm. They've mm -hmm. been a sports creature with jumping or racing or all kinds of things you can wager on. Right. They've, been, they've had a, a lot of roles with mankind. They've certainly been ridden to war, mm -hmm. and they were our wars, not theirs. Right. Uh, so they've had a lot of roles that did not serve them well, and mm. they've had a lot of roles that did. Mm. Only recently have they really been perceived as this animal that has this healing ability. And I'll say that I'm one of the first people probably on the planet that started publicly saying that and publicly bringing that forward. Mm -hmm. uh, there certainly have been others. And once the internet got really kicking, we all found yeah. out about each other, right? But mm, right, yeah. Doing this work, you know, uh, the Google wasn't there. And so <laughs> people were doing it, you know, I have a good friend in Santiago, Chile. And the mm. same summer that I started, he started seeing the same things. Mm. And so he put his together. And so I think everybody's got a different way of doing it. Um, a lot of the work is very activities based. And again, that's not what ours is. And there's mm. nothing wrong with the activities based that gives people, I think, uh, an aha, an insight, yeah. right? And then they leave with some insight that they got from being with a horse, which is great. Um, ours allows the horse a little bit more voice and more chance to voice what they believe is happening for humans. Right. Right. Through the somatic and through the gestalt. How do they, how do they do that? Like how do, when you say that I'm trying to picture, cause I haven't ha experienced it. So I'm trying to picture how do you give, how does the horse have more voice? Right. We put the microphone on him. <laughs> right. Mic him up, give him a lapel mic and off you go. Exactly. So um, a few things that they'll demonstrate. One is when, when my client is congruent in what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what they're holding in their gut, when all that's in an alignment, mm. the horse is closely partnered to them. Mm. And the horse is on what we call free liberty. So he could be anywhere in the arena, but mm -hmm. he'll choose to be right next to you when you have that alignment going on. Mm. So if a human coach is asking you a question, and the question might be, you know, if you worked for IBM, say, do you like your job? Mm. Your brain says no. And your, no, your brain says yes, your heart says no, and your gut says I have to, right? Mm, so yeah. Away from you. Good example. Like, Something's not okay. You're not in alignment. Mm. But if you actually do, they huh. ask you, Chris Angel, with your yep. company that you're having fun doing all this, right. you would think, yeah, I like what I do. I have a heart for what I do. I believe mm. in what I do. Of course, it'd be right with you. And right. So yeah. One, there's a dozen ways they do it, but that's one very, I call it my equidetector. Like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's good. You're all in alignment. I can really see the partnership because it's you, the, the horse needs the, the person to communicate to the other person, the client, like, and to ask the right kind of questions. And I can see where two years of training really is required to go into uh, a coach or a practitioner looking for, a gestaltist looking for what, what is happening in the client right. so that I can ask the horse 
or I can ask the client things that the horse can pick up. And if you didn't have the training, you wouldn't know what to ask. You wouldn't know what to look for, what to ask. No, and most of the time, uh, it's a debrief, like a ropes course. Most people approach right. this and, and they're doing it differently. So they do it as a debrief. Like, well, right. what the horse meant when he did this or that? Mm -hmm. you know, and they're, mm -hmm. right. they're in the danger in some cases of anthropomorphizing mm -hmm. onto the animal, which means putting our human emotions onto an animal's emotions. Mm -hmm. And ours, we're really careful not to anthropomorphize. We believe these horses have their own emotional field and they have their own way of showing them. And they'll do it in somatics. They do it in a, a lot of different ways. It's right. really fun. And yeah, it takes some mm. take training for them to pick all of that up. It's so fascinating. I remember uh, we had Kelly Grill on uh, for a second time and she was talking about sort of the, the personality assessment. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but of a horse, like really understanding how horses are wired. Right. That's Equithology. That's a book that I Equi wrote yeah, yeah. with one of my grads, Carolyn Patrick. And oh yeah, Carolyn, yeah. I'm glad Kelly brought that up. So, you know, so we've had the Myers Briggs. Maybe you've taken a Myers Briggs at some point, but um, yeah. temperament. And a lot of people take it to know if they're in the right job slot for life or things like that. Right. So, right. Jersey took the Myers Briggs, which is a big 400 question questionnaire, mm. brought it to 70 questions, just very user friendly, same statistics. So then Carolyn and I got the permission from David Kersey to write one on the horses. Wow. So in the book, people take the one on themselves, then the right. one on their horse. And a lot of times opposites attract there, just like in human relations. Right. Mm. Yeah. That's so interesting. I think it was Carolyn actually that said that. Kelly said some other smart thing to me, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think it was, I think it was Carolyn. Um, how, so what makes the horse different than other animals? Why do other animals have the same thing or what makes a horse different? that one of the misconceptions, you know, dogs are incredibly good healers with humans. I mean, most mm. people that have dogs know mm. that they can lower mm. blood pressure and that's why we see them as service animals, you know, yeah. need that. And, but if you think about it, a dog chums to the same thing you and I do, which is food. So mm. it, it's a predator. And so a mm. dog is looking for a treat. I have big Bernese mountain dogs. So mm. do anything for me, if they get a treat, if they <laughs> Right. right. Down, roll over seven thousand. Yeah. And and so they're motivated by mm. unconditional love. Horses are not, and they're motivated by treats. Horses are not. Mm. So horses are again on the other side of the continuum. So they're in the you know the prey animal. They're in the food chain basically. Mm -hmm. And so what they're looking for, rather than food, is leadership, safety, and alliance. So mm. whether it's a horse that's an alpha that's saying, "Hey, we're going this way." or it's a human that says, you're good with me, let's go here. They're, they're seeking that. They're seeking that, mm. am I safe with you? Am I safe in my situation? Mm. Is primary for them. And rather than unconditional love, I think their love is very conditional. It's very big. It's huge, big love. Mm. But what they're looking for is consistency, congruency, and safety. Mm. And, and they're totally, I mean, my horses, when I walk into my barn, they all turn toward the front or, or come in from the pasture. They're all really happy to see me. That's mm. not true in every barn. I think our horses mm. are happy to see us because they're highly respected for their mm. knowledge, for their ability, for who they are. Huh. You know, it's not a dumb animal to me. You know, right. Some people see horses huh. a fly bait system or something. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they live a naturally gestalt life. And right. That's where I put two and two as a gestaltist. That's where I really put the work <laughs> together. What an amazing aha where you're like, oh, I think I'm connecting some dots here. You know what? Are, that, and that was back in, you connected those dots in the 80s. Yeah, right? in the 80s. And um, yeah, I was in Flagstaff, Arizona and uh, just was amazed. They were coming off the grass uh, mm. at free will, mm -hmm. not because anybody told them to, but because yeah. they felt a client that I had who was in their emotional field. And yeah. when I moved the client through Gestalt into looking at their true emotions, mm. the horses would just come over and join the work and want wow. to be there. And wow. that was the dots that I thought, that is what they're doing, this is affirmed. And then started formalizing it more with the Gestalt as I went along. And then you started your program for other practitioners. Uh, when was that? Just on the timeline? So we started our program in 2008. Mm, we have okay. 185 graduates in mm. seven different countries. Wow. Yeah. So you'll have people from flying in from other countries to do the training with you. Yep. We have a beautiful.
beautiful graduate wow. in Singapore, one in Holland, one in wow. Latvia. I had to look where Latvia was. I was right. Where Latvia yeah. Was. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And they come here and we set the program. The program has a lot of choice to it. So yeah. you need to take these eight cores, but the international students can make four trips to do it. They mm. do it at a time each time. Mm. Still, four trips from Singapore, right? Right. So, okay. So, I mean, first of all, I was super fascinated uh, by this type of work. And I always love it when people find um, patterns or connect dots that um, others haven't because I feel like it leads us into a new opportunity, right? A new expansion for what's possible. What, um, where do you see as next? Like, you know, you're a visionary. So what, what do you see in the 10, 20 years down the road for this type of work and what's evolving? I believe that people are becoming more, um, it's becoming a little bit more common. So mm -hmm. 25 years ago, or even 20 years ago, if I said, what I do is I heal humans through horses in partnership mm -hmm. with horses, they go, what? <laughs> now they tend to say, oh, my cousin does that in two towns over. They mm -hmm. don't do my work, mm -hmm. but they do some form of mm -hmm. equine assisted work, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to become um, more familiar for people and that people will be more discerning and plug into the different types of the work for what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. They're looking for something educational or leadership training for their company. They might go one direction. Mm -hmm. If they want to actually expand and grow in their personal awareness, they come to us. Um, so I think people are going to be able to kind of uh, shop it. Like you stay in a motel six for one reason and a Marriott in another. Right. 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 They're going to yeah. be able to differentiate that. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I, I believe that there are a lot of horses that are extremely good at this and that will probably see horses bred more for this purpose. Mm. That especially as the baby boomers are aging, they're mm. not always interested in riding. I ride quite a bit, but they're mm. not always interested in riding. They would love to have a relationship with a horse mm. and a partnership with a horse and they can learn through through us what that really means, what that really is. Any one huh. of my could help somebody yeah more of a person that then their horse shows up for you know mm. to have a real relationship with them that is so interesting i just had this thought of uh you know i was trying to think of the wild west because that's sort of the stereotype of where i think horse i think of horses and i think oh cowboys and riding riding horses in the in the front in the frontier <laughs> anyway but uh, and I think maybe because that's the story that's just been told to us for so long is that's how we think of horses but there was a time when um, it was very common for almost every person to have a horse. How interesting that we would come back to a time where maybe everybody wants to have a horse, but for different reasons, rather than to use it, but to, right. yeah, right. Partner with the horse and to have a heart, heartfelt relationship, much like, you know, I forget, I saw PetSmart's ad the other day, and they were talking about how many, when we were growing up, how many people had a dog in their home. For right. How many people have a dog in their home? And I yeah. think is it's kind of becoming that way mm. because people thought if you had a horse you had to board it somewhere and, mm -hmm. and ride it a lot and take expensive lessons and that's really mm -hmm. what they were for was usury you know mm -hmm. yeah and with us it's being with it's, mm. being with. Mm. it's a huge payoff mm. being with horses that's totally what i see that's amazing that's amazing i love that wow well what so for you for touched by a horse uh, touchbyhorse.com like what's next for you what's what are some projects you're working on what's well i have a new book coming out and i'll probably come back to you for another podcast oh good I have my hands on it so it yeah. says what in the heck is gestalt it has a picture <laughs> of a horse on the front because it's our most commonly asked question mm. and i got involved in gestalt also way back mm. in the 80s and it yeah. changed my life mm. and so gestalt is uh for me it's a lifestyle it's a way of showing up for life it's about mm. living truly in the present moment mm -hmm. and a lot of people chris that i find either struggle with depression which means you're focused on the past mm -hmm. or they struggle with anxiety which means you're focused on the future mm -hmm. right when you're right here it's all good mm -hmm. so if they learn more about being in in the now and that's one of the things horses teach us really well mm -hmm. and also gestalt is a premise that says that it's not about somebody else having all the answers. Well, you actually have the answers inside of you. So if you were my client, I would hold the belief system that you're capable, that you have all the answers you need for yourself, mm. but it might be outside your awareness. It might be how you're looking at a situation. 
So our coaches are really well trained not to give advice, but to actually ask the evocative questions and set the situation up in a way mm. that you mm. go, I now know what I need to do about this. So good. Yeah. And I just, just I'm sorry, what's that? Apparently unfinished business, which is the keystone to Gestalt. And we all have unfinished mm. business, mm. whether it's something that happened to you when you were five, you know, yeah. if your parent died or your mother left and abandoned you. Everybody's got stuff in their life, right? Mm -hmm. And and then you grew up and now you're an adult. And you think, well, yeah, that happened, but I'm okay. You know, I'm all right as an adult. But it's interesting how those things are kind of imbued in the cells of our body. Mm -hmm. And so similar situations can trigger a lot for people. And they right. think, I don't know why that bothers me so much, but mm -hmm. it really does. Yeah. It bothers them because it's unfinished from way back here. So in about an hour and a half, we finished these big lightning bolts that have struck people's lives. Mm. They don't have to talk about it for 10 years. They don't have to go back and look at it twice. They look right. at it once. Done. Yeah. So that's the efficacy. Of it. I love it. It reminds me of, um, there. I think there are moments where we get the big stuff, the, un, the big un, uh, incomplete stuff completed. But then I also think of, um, you know, when you work out and you have a personal trainer that you come see. Right. I, I could see, I could see, and maybe people are using what you do this way, but I could see where having frequent visits with a gestaltist and a horse to um, continue to yeah. stay aligned. Right. Like people go to chiropractors to get realigned, right? Exactly. Similarly. Same. And, and the mm. more, the more awareness we have of all the parts of self that we have, mm -hmm. yeah. I see looking in a kaleidoscope you remember looking at a kaleidoscope? yeah yeah i do and all the little shards of glass would be a certain pattern mm. then you barely turn that kaleidoscope totally different pattern mm. that's our human personality so mm. your one personality when you're doing your hosting and you're mm -hmm. interviewing somebody which you do so well mm, thank and you. you're another personality maybe when you're playing ball with your dog at home in the front yard you know you, yeah. don't have skills, you need different skills right right so so mm. that's how the human personality is well if we carry true awareness of all those different parts we can take responsibility for employing the different parts when we need them mm -hmm. and maybe a part that we don't do well shouldn't show up you know right. <laughs> if you're discussing uh discussing finances with the partner with the spouse mm -hmm. you, you might have certain parts you don't want to have show up you know it's yeah. like no that doesn't help you know we need to pull that part back that's not helpful yeah so that's part of it is they just learn so much about themselves, the effects of their family of origin, all the unfinished business, all the parts of self. It's, it's quite the fun journey for people, really. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Well, this is great. I, I feel um, as I'm, this has been mm, added dimension or color to all the other interviews we've done because it gives sort of the origin story, like we said in the beginning of how this work came to be. But I love, I love the implications for where it will go and what is possible for us as humans and humanity Absolutely. as we get more in alignment and we learn how to partner with horses instead. Of, that whole thing, like I think as humans, where we come in and dominate stuff and control stuff and use things as tools and just this returning to gestalt, like returning to the presence and I think sometimes humans get uncomfortable thinking that an animal has abilities that we don't have. Like there's a lot of debate around that. I think yeah. Jane Goodall showed us the, the capacity of the chimps. Mm. But where she got criticized was when she hinted that the chimps had abilities to do things that we did not have. Mm. That, that seemed to offend people. <laughs> and I do find the horses are that way. It's so arrogant. I love it. It's so great. Yes, yeah. you're right. And so horses right. are tremendous athletes. Way right than we'll ever dare to be. Michael Jordan will never be able to, you know, run a race with right. a horse, right? Yep. So all those kinds of things, mm. but they have all kinds of emotional mm. and intellectual and uh, somatic gifts mm. that really we don't have. And they mm. share those quite well with people too. Mm. So that's that's my next Amazing. push. And the next book that I'm writing <laughs> is on what those mm. gifts are of the horse and yeah. how to carry those. I love it. Well, people, I would imagine people listening to this um, are, are curious about how to, I mean, some, somebody listening to this is like, how do I take the next step in this kind of work? I'm, I'm empathetic. I really want to help and heal people. Uh, I have horses. Right. How do I do what you've taught others to do? So where do people go to learn more about your work? So a couple things. So touchedbyhorse.com is our website. And if you're interested in, in seeing if you would be a good 
person that we would train, there's applications there and all the basic information for what the two years are and, and what it costs and all of that. Also, if you want to find a practitioner, if you'd like to work with one of our 185 graduates, we're mm. really happy to guide you to doing that as well. And then I have a lot of products on there, our three anthology books, which you've been interviewing our authors on. Yep. Those give people a really good taste. Every story gives them a taste of an actual experience they've mm -hmm. gone through in this work. And then also I have um, a deck called Wisdom uh, from the Horse, and it's mm -hmm. a card deck. Mm -hmm. And people love to just call, kind of call up the message from the horse mm -hmm. for that day. It's just a cool center and then my new book will be out in May. Hmm. I love that. Wow. So good. Well, so if I bottom mind all that, I mean, the, the, the home, the mothership of it all is touched by horse.com. Yes. Horse.com. I, I loved the Perfect. old show touched by an angel. Yes. I remember that. Yeah. My horses are my angels. So touched ah, that's great. Horse, that's where the name came. Oh, from. oh really? That's great. I didn't know. That. I remember that show. Yeah. That's yeah. so fantastic. Well, thank you for all the work that you're doing, uh, not only to train people, but to bring this work to the world, because I feel like it's very important work. And uh, if people want to reach out to you, they can go to touchedbyhorse.com. Melissa Pierce, thank you so much for your sharing your wisdom today. And until next time. Yep, until next time. Take care. Okay.